In this section, we will look at using the MATLAB solver inside a state machine in Enterprise Architect. There's two examples in the EA SIM model. We'll start with the Lotto example. There's some details here. You can read about how it works. Basically, it makes a random number generator to choose whether certain number pairs are selected or not in the Lotto draw. We open up the state machine, see initial state into an initialization state. This is to initialize the MATLAB solver. It's generally a good idea to initialize the MATLAB solver once at the start and then use it globally throughout. Otherwise, MATLAB will take a few seconds to start each time and you will lose any state that was stored in the MATLAB workspace. If we have a look at the code, for this, we can right click and do features edit behavior or the shortcut key Alt 7. This, new sh this shortcut works from most elements now and will take you straight to the code in a window like this. So we see we've got some trace statements. We initialize a JavaScript variable to hold the results with just some dummy numbers to start with. Then we do create the new solver with new solver and MATLAB as a parameter. And this MATLAB variable will be uh, usable and exposed for the rest of the state machine. From there, it moves on to draw, which is uh, just a placeholder state to allow the flow to go. On to shuffle. This is where the random numbers are generated. We'll see first command is RNG shuffle. This tells MATLAB to shuffle the um, random number generator so that it starts from a different point each time. RANDI generates integer random numbers in a five by five matrix stored in the MATLAB variable V. This is then converted into a true or false matrix to decide whether the number is selected in the lotto results. The following bit here demonstrates how to extract individual elements from an array from MATLAB. It is possible to pull the whole array back with a single get command. But for example, if you had a very large array and you only wanted certain examples, this would show how you could tell MATLAB to get an individual element out. Once that's Num random numbers are defined, it moves into the results section, which has two parallel sections. For simplicity, there would be more once you had all the numbers for a, a normal lotto result. And then there's two substates, again split into parallel states showing some of the options. The idea here is that there's a choice between 1 and 39, and the random number generator decides which one of these two get chosen in the pair, and each pair will get its own result. If we run this now, the simulate simulator brings up this window. Click play. And we see initializes MATLAB. It pauses while it loads MATLAB in the background. Gets the random numbers, moves into the results, decides the results. In this case, 39 is chosen, and then 13, 4, and so on. If we want to have a look at the variables inside JavaScript, we can look at the locals here. Here we have our V matrix that holds a five by five true or false matrix. And we can open that up and see the random trues and falses that we use to decide which pair of numbers to choose. And we see a couple of local variables as well. If we go to simulation events, we can see there's a continue and a quit. So quit would go out this way and continue will continue on to this exit state, which will flow out. And rerun another random draw. And we see this time we got some different results. 
say quit this time. And it's finished. If you want to see more of the code all in one go, if you select the main element here in the Alt 7 shortcut, you can see the tree structure of the state machine, including any code that exists. So there's a create function and the init function.